I'm going to start. Okay, so this is the damage and failure of materials and mechanical design project. Um, and we're designing a connecting rod. Um, so uh, this is the table of contents. It tells you what's in the project. Um, if you click on any of these, you can go straight to the sections. Uh, and you can expand these and go straight to a section that you want. Um, so if we start with the introduction, uh, it goes through what is a connecting rod, uh, what is it used for, applications, kind of design. So in this project, you'll design a connecting rod based on the engine of your choice uh, with specific engine operating conditions. And you'll go through a load analysis, uh, and then you'll take those loads and put them through a preliminary uh, beam theory design. And this is just using that lab. And then uh, in the 2D solid model, you'll go into console and uh, make a 2D solid model and then use a finite element analysis to analyze just a two-dimensional finite element analysis of it. But then you'll take the files and put them into MATLAB and do a fatigue analysis in MATLAB. And then you'll have to write your own fracture mechanics uh, MATLAB file to run fracture mechanics. And then you'll do a design optimization uh, through, through a process. Uh, and then when you have your final design and it's optimized based on fatigue and fracture mechanics and uh, stress analysis, you will uh, go through a 3D solid model, make a giant solid model part, and then uh, do a final finite element analysis. So that's the breakdown. Uh, the grading policy, by the fourth week, you should probably have done the console solid model finite element because uh, there's still a lot of other stuff you have to do like the fracture mechanics and the fatigue and then you have to optimize and then you have to still do the 3D solid model and all that. Um, so the software, you should have, you should be able to access all the software through C's account, through your C's lab. For Abacus, when you, when you log in your, your remote desktop, so all the files that you save, you can't flash drive into it. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure that you're saving it in My Documents and that you can some of the files get rather large, so you can't make a ton of files, or you'll you only have a certain designated amount of space mm -hmm. for that C's lab allows you um, to access any of the files in this document. You just click on the the um, paper clip that's in the document. So you'll see it'll have a, a thing, and it'll be this is the file name, and then it'll have a paper clip. You can just double click on it or right click on it, and it'll open and save the file. Um, so this is just showing you how to remote desktop in. This is what you need to be doing. So for the first thing, we do the load analysis. So we're getting the you know uh, contact forces from the piston and, and crankshaft, and we're doing all these inertial lo loads based on kinematics. Um, so this just talks about the kinematics and of the connecting rod. Like this would be your connecting rod here, and the motion and everything that's going under, and all the different angles to solve it so you can read through in the dynamics that you need to, to use uh, in your project. And things uh, go on where you have to change the reference frame um, from inertial to non-inertial, and this is just all the basic uh, dynamic equations you need to solve it. Uh, and then what you would do is a numerical, uh, using MATLAB, you would essentially do this load analysis and file, so I just click on this, and then your combustion file and your um, um, dot two dv, which is you know dot product uh, file. <laughs> Before you go, I just wanted to make a clarification on the uh, dynamic uh, analysis. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go back, you see that uh, we have actually a moving system, and uh, we have two ways to model it. One is to uh, have a fully dynamic uh, analysis, which includes vibrations and uh, wave propagation in the solids. And the other way is what we have here, in which we just convert the uh, inertia, the forces in uh, the um, uh, forces coming from the dynamics into equivalent body forces, and apply them in a kind of a static analysis. So it's essentially uh, a dynamic analysis, but is do is done with the statics module in uh, in Comsol. Exactly. Um, so yeah, so we just go through and uh, you put in your engine specifications like you know speed and how many cylinders and stroke and length and your piston mass and you know uh, all the properties you need the weight of the connecting rod 
and then you would just run through these files and you should get data like this that shows you the the forces the piston force the the transverse and the axial you know forces and the inertial loads mm -hmm. so and then if you want to uh, this is a good note uh, you if you want to this the file that you use the combustion pressure file it has 3,600 uh, points, mm -hmm. and you don't need such a, an advanced file when you run later in the console. So you only in, so the CP downsize is only 360 points. Mm -hmm. So that's better when you're running it. So just a note that that's important that you want to change it for that change. So the preliminary design. So you just you probably only want to do this once, and then you can you're using a cross section uh, like a regular rectangle. But you can go into the code and change it for an I-beam, as I indicate later on. Uh, you can, if you want to change the cross-section to H or I-beam, you can just change it because you have the inertia, and you can just modify the code. So it's, it's set up like that, but it, you can definitely make a modification. So you just go through, and it just uses basic... You know, so, so right now, the MATLAB code, it has just a rectangular cross-section? Yes, yeah, it's, it's mm -hmm. just designed for the rectangular cross-section. So if they go to get the equations for the I-beam, they can just substitute them in the MATLAB? Yeah, you can, mm -hmm. you can, if you read through and, and understand it, just go through um, the, the load analysis and the beam analysis, mm -hmm. and you can see that it's essentially this, and then you can like, oh, I can change this inertia mm -hmm. and, and the area and everything for, for an I-beam if you want, right. and it's the similar. And then there's a buckling in there too, buckling mm -hmm. equations, and again, you just change the inertia. So. So yeah, so just go through and here is the note. You want to use the CP downsize because it's, you know, uh, it's 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 360 points instead of 3,600. Uh, and then you know one of them will do a movie and will show you the um, the the shear and bending moment diagrams as it goes through the the loading condition. So so that's essentially the whole beam analysis. So this is just to get you a preliminary design. So you're not starting with five feet as you're connecting, you know, something mm -hmm. ridiculous. So you can get a basic idea. So this is where you, and this is, if you starting to do the design optimization, you, you loop back through this whole analysis where you start with console. Um, so you, you want to start with console. You can access this through C's. And the first thing you would do is open this window and you, would, you want a 2D analysis, the structural mechanics module, solid mechanics and just a stationary, you know, not a dynamic analysis. It's just a static analysis. Um, and then you could go to the, you start making the solid model. So to do that, you make circles. As you can see here, we're making circles, and then we're, we're unioning them together, and then differencing them, cutting away the circles. Um, and I could, I could show more in console later. Yeah. And, and so here's just images of what you have in console. Uh, and then at some point, you need to get the inertia and the, the centroid and, and all the, the mass properties. Mm -hmm. So what we do is then we, we have it go to SolidWorks. And in SolidWorks, you, you, you export this geometry into SolidWorks. You could extrude the thickness that you want the connecting rod to be, the basic 2D model. And well, the, the reason we go to SolidWorks is that in Comsol we didn't have this uh, possibility to get the the area properties. Yeah, it doesn't have prop, an elegant it? solution to find the inertia mm -hmm. and the centroid. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, but if you wanted to too, you could, because in the 2D model these are basic cylinders and are in a rod. You could just do the basic 2D analysis for the inertia mm -hmm. in, in parallel axis theorem. Do that whole manipulation. You could write an M file, but you based on, it. so I mean it's possible to do mm -hmm. yourself and that, then you don't have to go through the loops of going through this every time. Um, so, so that was just doing the mass properties and this is, this is finding the mass properties. Uh, so then you can add fillets to it so you don't have stress concentrations um, to your, your connecting rod. And then you're creating these contact pairs, so this is like an assembly. So this is a separate body than this body right here. Um, so that was essentially it. And then so this, now you're in solid solid works with the fillets. This is this is went back. No, or you you're going back to uh, yeah. You can console. fill it in, in this and then send it to solid send it back. Works okay. And fill it there. Mm -hmm. However you want it to do uh, the analysis. And then this talks about how um, if you want to set it up so you can have an I beam, then later on we're going to change the thickness. So this this piece right here might have a uh, a be thicker than this piece here, 
and then this might be thicker. So then you, you're simulating I-beam cross-section. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So so this is just telling you that if you want to do that, you should you should you you want to design the part to set it up. So this is I just give an example, but you might have to fill it in and do what you need to to modify it. Mm -hmm. um, so but now that there are separable like areas, because like here there's no separable like domain, but now there's these actual domains that I can select and actually change the thickness in the next module. Yes. So in the next chapter we actually start doing the finite element analysis. So what you need to do is you have parameters and variables, and these files have your all your data that was done in the load analysis. So like your connecting rod, like length and the height and cross section and the the inertia and all the all these are you know parameters that you have that you calculated that you have tabulated, and then you have variables which are essentially the equations that the MATLAB file runs, which are these 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 equations. The, uh, of the motion that you had in the kinematics. So the, w the way Compsol runs is that it'll, it'll go through and you're parametrically sweeping through crank angles. So all these equations are based on the phi, which is your crank angle. So as you change the crank angle, then it will recalculate all your, your forces. And so every time, so it just parametrically sweep. And so can you say something about how you import these equations from MATLAB into Compsol? Yes, so you <coughs> use the, the load from file button. So so I can go to console. You think I should just... Yeah, maybe you can go to console, yeah. Because as you can see this better. Mm -hmm. So in here... Oh, let me go to the other one. In here, I have these parameters. So mm -hmm. so I can right-click on this thing and add variables. Mm -hmm. uh, or, um, yeah. So, and then you can add parameters. So I added these parameters. And I have the, you know, these are all the fixed things that you want in like the inertia, your modulus elasticity, your Poisson's ratio, this is, you start with a phi of zero, but you're going to parametrically sweep through it. Mm -hmm. And then your volume and, you know, all these parameters you already have. But in the, uh, in the model, under the definitions, you can create a variable. Uh, and these are all my variables. So you can see that here I have this expression is based on, you know, like phi, it has it, gamma, d gamma. These are all the equations that you can find in um, uh, specifically the load analysis. These are essentially these equations here put into um, console. So we'll calculate everything based on feed. But you put them manually or you import them? No, from they're, they're imported. So if you go back to here, um, all I have to do is go load from file. Uh huh. And then I grab my text file. Yes. So if I go. I go to the um, this thing, so I can grab my parameters, right? I can load that, open it, um, and, and it's then, a, it's and a text it's a that. text file. Yeah, it's just a text file. Uh huh. So you have yeah. So if you see here, you know, so it will be every, each line of the text file. It will put it uh, on a new line. As yeah, a parameter. so the way this text file is set up yeah. is that like you have a you have parameters text file, you have your variables, and you have the pressure from Compson mm -hmm. which you you run the load analysis mm -hmm. and it'll get you your pressure file. Mm -hmm. You're gonna import that so you can extrapolate points from that curve. Mm -hmm. uh, and then these were just my ones that I used, but I can show you what the the actual file. Yeah, yeah, file. So if you open up the parameters, yes, this that's is what, what you need is. to see. And uh -huh. then if you open up the variables. Uh -huh. You have all the variables, so yeah. it just imports it exactly like that, with the yeah. descriptions right there, and it and it, line knows, by, it imports it line by line, yeah. Yeah, and mm -hmm. it knows what, what it knows what the units are. Yeah, mm -hmm. and those see, and those text files were written by MATLAB. Uh, he, I think he wrote them. You can write them either by MATLAB oh, or just by uh, yourself. We manually type these in. Manual. No, no, the text files. Yeah, the text files. Then you can um, save to a file. No, 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 but they are generated initially by MATLAB or no, we just, just write it by, by yourself. We wrote in the equations in here and then we save to I a see. file. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then if you need to upload it, we I just see. upload it back. But now one comment is that the variables and the expressions have to be recognized by COMSOL. Yes, well that's why, Sue, everything is based on your variables. You've, exactly, variables. that's, the, so that's beta, the key point. As long as you can so, so the starting point is defining the variables up there. Yeah. And then whatever you write, whatever script has to recognize these variables, and then it will uh, understand it. Mm. So is that everything? Yeah, clear. So yeah. then for the pressure file that 
you this is I I just went and opened the you know that was the pressure for Compsol, and the, and it brought in all these pressure data, mm -hmm. and that pressure data was and you can see um, you can see that all I had to do was write in in the load analysis. I ran my load analysis and I just typed in this command and it would give me the pressure data as a function of oh. yeah and mm. then it just gave it to me so then I mm. have it now um, and you can look at it uh, sorry. Uh, you can look at it and it looks like this which is great this is the and you want to make sure that this has a, a number like 10 to the 7 or something because mm -hmm. there have been people that ran this that accidentally just put in the the because you take a normalized file where this is one up here, mm. and these are all the other values, and uh, so you want to make sure that you run the analysis and it actually gets the pressure data. And it's <laughs> yes, yeah, so because it looks like the same thing, but this is if this value is one, then you're totally <laughs> off. So, um, so yeah, so that's essentially putting in your parameters. Um,